Welcome to Softcore History. Welcome back to Softcore History. I'm your host for the week, Dan Regester. And I'm joined, as always, by Rob Fox. Hello. That's Hi. the energy you're going to wow. give us? I don't know what kind of energy I'm going to give you. I'm in the middle of drinking. We'll see where it gets me. We'll see where it takes me. So you're okay. in the middle of drinking. I'm in the middle of drinking. Yeah. That's vague. That's a pretty nebulous frame of time, huh? It could last a while. Yeah. I could be done in 20 minutes. We don't know. I won't be done in 20 minutes. We do know that. We I, know that. I won't I know be done in 20 minutes. Yeah. yeah. But we, yeah, I mean, I'm getting fucked up for this podcast. Right. Like You've been I, drinking for about four straight years. I'm actually concerned. Why? Huh. It seems to be perfecting it. Yeah. yeah. I'm, he- I'm healthy as a horse. As an ox. Yeah. Uh, the other voice, of course, you hear is Jake Coleman. I'm also curious why you went away from the saying both our names format, where you say how we're all great friends, and now you're just talking about Rob. No, first. you're the no, one. I usually always go one to one. Yeah, you're the one that's always like joined by my best friends, and we don't acknowledge that you think that. No, no, you we're both say that. You both we're coworkers. Say that. You're you're a peer of mine, but I wouldn't consider you a friend. Okay, well, you both say that you're liars. And I don't like you anymore. Friendship officially over. Fine. I, Should we tell him? Shit. Yeah. That, that lonesome dove dinner, that was the first one we invited you to. We've been to <laughs> seven on the company's dime. <laughs> how are you siphoning money out? <laughs> Don't worry about how we handle our shit. And the only reason we invited you was because you paid the tab. Yeah. Mm, mm. My wife's going to hate this. She thought we all had a really nice night. I like that your wife listens. Rob's doesn't. No, she sure doesn't. Doesn't yeah. support the podcast. My wife will never listen. She actually complained about the podcast. She's been many on times, the show. And she still doesn't listen. Yeah. She didn't listen to the one she was on? Uh, well, she was on it. Why well, she didn't listen to it? That's, she was there. Fair. Yeah. She doesn't listen. She, she's, she hates that we gab. I, We've talked about this. She hates gabbing. She hates gabbing. I love that she uses the word from like the 1920s. Yeah. I mean, she does. I don't know. Tell you. Gabbing. You're gabbing too much. You just gab too much. It's flapping your gums. I actually found out there was a bunch of women that I talked to that listened to the podcast. So but I, didn't you make them listen to it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it doesn't count. <laughs> I found out. Yeah, I found <laughs> that's out. That's a weird way of saying he made them listen to us. Well, they enjoy it. Oh, you found out they enjoy it. That's yeah, what you yeah, found yeah. out. That's okay, different, okay. yeah. That's good. But you still had to pitch it first. These were not organic. Like They were like, oh, hey, I, I know you. I listen to your podcast. Isn't that the most organic? You, it was Word like of your mouth? friends that you were like, hey, please listen. You should check it out. We were driving in the car together, and they're like, is this you? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so you, wait, wait, you played Liar. it for That didn't happen. <laughs> yeah, no. Did one of them clap afterwards? Like, what happened then? Why would they clap? That's like every tweet where it's like, my four-year-old came into the room and everyone clapped. She was like, whatever. mommy, yeah. why do they let guns kill babies? <laughs> like something like that. <laughs> that yeah. And yeah. like, my four-year-old asked me and I didn't know how to answer. Like, that's not, I, it's not. Yeah, and then everyone no clapped in the classroom. Yeah, no, yeah. no, no, no four-year-old My did toddler that. did ask. About I mean, I control. believe you have a toddler. I don't believe it asked you anything. Yeah, I don't believe it can speak. Well, yeah, he doesn't actually speak It's a basement to toddler. He's in another state. Uh, I don't pay child support. Uh, we're going through kind of like legal issues right now. Hilarious. <laughs> Stop staring at Look, me. I don't want it is a good legal argument. I think so. <laughs> yeah. My choice. Yeah. Your body, your choice. Why should you have to touch oh. that child with your hugs or money? I think that's a fair argument. Yeah. But uh, we got a loaded show today. No shit. <laughs> I actually have six pages worth of content, which is no way, way really? more than I actually do. That's a lot. Yeah, I, I didn't have a topic until. What's your average amount morning? of notes? Three. I usually go three. Because I usually go six, but you write in bigger chunks than I do. I'm looking at it right now. I'm usually like line, two lines, space, two lines, it's bullet points. It's getting real. You're writing paragraphs here. here. Yeah, you're double spacing. You're going like 15 to be fair, font. Rob, I was yeah. going to say Rob goes 27 font, though. So. Yeah. What were all the uh, kind of like tricks of the trade to get through like a 10-page like a paper in college? Uh, 1.25 space mm-hmm. on the double, like, not, or whatever, 2.25, whatever the double space is. Just add a little fraction add to that. a quarter that. of an inch to your margin. Uh, there, yeah. You change it. There was a, a font that was really almost identical to Times New Roman, but if you changed it to that, it also gave you about a quarter of a page just on that alone. Yeah. Um, I think they picked up on it a little later, but I think we were out of college by then. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. 
hitting that space bar twice after the period sometimes. Yes, if you have to do it. If you have to. That's a last resort. Yeah. But again, uh, I kind of crowdsourced my topic today. I didn't really have anything. Yeah, I saw that story. That was pretty weak. Yeah, I was like, wow, Dan, working hard. Yeah, can't you just go on Reddit like the rest of us? I could have, uh, but I actually want to shout out my fraternity brother for pitching this topic. Uh, Jesse McGinnis, shouts to you. Actually, guy, I could Wait, can I guess the topic? Can I guess it? Because I don't remember what you told me earlier. Okay. Yeah. That time me and Jesse McGinnis kissed. <laughs> Uh, it was a reach around. There was no touch into the lips. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. He's actually an interesting dude. He's a, uh, a curious cat. He's been kind of a gallivanting around the world. He lived in Vietnam for a bit. He's in London right now. Okay. So I think I'm going to, if I go to I'm Europe jealous. for Christmas, I'm going to probably stay with him. My greatest regret sexually is that I never went to like Australia or the UK or anywhere like that as a single American who could get laid above his pay grade solely off of accent. Yeah, and he's kind of like a, he's like a big bearded man, kind of has like okay. Hagrid vibes. So people, that, what, they think of like fucking Paul Bunyan? Kind of, yeah. Like an American pioneer? He's a lumberjack. Yeah. Clearly. This I man's, think that, that plays in England. This man's killed Indians. <laughs> now I need him. Well, inside of me. I, I really kind of hope people in modern London still think <laughs> it's like people circling the wagons over here, but like just it's all the same, just with better <laughs> guns now. Yeah. It's just like, oh, it's covered wagons and AR 15s yeah. over there, you know? Well, I'm glad you guys actually said that because it's a good transition into my topic today that Jesse pitched Dodge City, Kansas. You hear about this? You familiar with this? <laughs> yeah, about that. You feel that? Dodge City, what's the deal with Dodge City, Kansas, huh? Uh, it was originally an army fort built in 1865. Every city, I swear to God, every city west of the Mississippi was originally an army fort. In fact, not even east of the Mississippi, because Detroit was originally a fort. Everything's a fort. But uh, not for the Civil War. It was to combat natives. Yeah. yeah. Still no, fort. there was no Civil War being fought in Kansas. I mean, there was bleeding Kansas. And by the way, whenever anyone from Kansas tells you they were on the right side of history with the Civil War, let me just, let's just be clear here. No, you were on no side of history, really. You didn't contribute anything to the Civil War. Eight people lived there. You didn't help out anything at all. Fuck Kansas. How do you really feel about it? Anyway, yeah, even my hometown is pretty much existent because of a fort, a Civil War fort. Yeah. Like, a lot of them are. Yeah. What's the, what's the main thing in St. Augustine, your wife's hometown? The fort. A fort. The big fort. Yeah. Everything's a fort. It's the oldest city in America. Yeah. It is. Right? No. It is the oldest, it is the oldest uh, European in settlement North America. in North yeah. America. Yeah. Well, it was an uh, army fort built in 1865 to combat natives turned frontier cattle town that had a reputation for being one of the most wicked towns in the Old West. Uh, when General William Sherman, notable name. Yeah. Hey, put... Respect him. Say his middle name. What's his middle name? You don't know his middle name? Do you know his middle name? Sherman? Yeah. <laughs> no. Her Herman? Come on. <laughs> Are you kidding Herman me? Sherman? Is it Herman Sherman? William Tecumseh Sherman? <laughs> yeah. Come the fuck on. Okay, I'll give you that. Like, that's, yeah, I should probably know that. Tecumseh? Yeah. Tecumseh. Pardon me. I'm about Tecumseh. <laughs> <laughs> Please, sir. May I have some cum? <laughs> so when uh, General William Sherman ordered the slaughter of the American buffalo in order to drive Indians onto reservations, Dodge boomed in trade, shipping over 1.5 million hides with three different railroad tracks out of town and also the Santa Fe Trail nearby. So uh, killing the buffalo was what built this town. Yeah. I Essentially it the genocide on... of an animal. It was built to, on to the American bison bone. murder people. It was like a second degree genocide. It was a genocide to genocide. Imagine doing that. You have a genocide to genocide. Yeah. Man. I mean, you could. Genocide wow. the animal to eventually, yeah, genocide. It's like a genocide domino. Geneception. <laughs> Essentially. Do they cancel each other out? No. no. It's, they, a, it's, they a, it's a like when you found each it's other. It's a force <laughs> multiplier, really. <laughs> I was going to say it's not like multiplying two negatives, right? No. <laughs> How? There was no positive from this. Uh, well, you get this town. That's not positive. Yeah, and nothing you'll in find Kansas out why. is a positive. You'll find out. Yeah, why. when you said it was a wicked city, did you mean like Boston or like Salem? What kind of wicked are we talking here? Wicked good time. Oh, okay. Hell yeah, brother. 
So the place was built on the bones of the bison, but by 1876, with virtually nothing but decaying carcasses on the prairie, uh, hunters put themselves out of business. You know, did too good of a job. It's a real flooded market. Flooded with blood. Bison blood. Yeah. Uh, they joined the railroad, uh, railroad workers, drifters, and soldiers stumbling into town with a population of about 1,200, quickly finding one of the 19 saloons. In the, inevitably, lawlessness and gunslinging ensued. Wait, this so is, by the way, this is another lesson in how you really make money in life, right? It's not on crypto idiot here. <laughs> Right, or it's not, it's, it is on, you make money on the crypto idiot, buy right? Buy the debt, buy the debt. You don't buy the crypto, you buy the things surrounding crypto and sell it to crypto dummies. Like the same way in the gold rush, the people who made the most money, you might have heard of this family name, Levi, Levi Strauss. Yeah, they sold stuff to them. Yeah, you sell stuff to the idiots. Well, Rob. Who want to go take a hammer and just hit a rock. Well, crypto is annoying until it's inspiring. That's what a... Billboard in Austin. I was going to say the black and white dumbass billboards we have here. Mm -hmm. The revolution's already here. It's like, man, you know a crypto guy. The revolution, uh, losing $100 a day, it's great. <laughs> it's fucking here, man. <laughs> Welcome your fucking new world god, I'm okay? I'm out. My uh, strategy of paying my taxes with the uh, money I earned on crypto, not going so well. I mean, look, the tree of liberty must be refreshed from time to time with the blood of morons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's, God. <laughs> So you're telling me it's not decentralized. 1336, Rob, huh? thank you. <laughs> is that a good is that Yeah, a good no, I'm, I'm time stamping that. Yeah. Oh, man. No, um, I agree wholeheartedly with Rob. I was really interested in the fact that they had 19 saloons for 1,100 people. 1,200. 12, still, that's an insane amount of saloons. Yeah, for that. Feels like a lot. <laughs> that's like shit. That's like a saloon. I'd love for to know the uh, places to drink alcohol to people in Austin ratio, though. And I'll include Chili's and Applebee's and shit like that. Anywhere you get beers. Why wouldn't you? Yeah. Dollar Marks? You'd have to include just the mall then because they have bars. They have a bar. <laughs> they have I a know. Bar in oh, my the mall. God. I, I want to get so fucked up at did, that mall bar outside did you not of the shoe this? store. Did you? No, I did. Oh, I just saw it recently a couple days ago. Oh, no. I've, I've gotten drunk there. Oh, my God. I want to do it so bad. It's not fun. But it's worth it. Is it not fun? It seems <laughs> really kind fun. Of fun. God it's damn kind it, Joel. Of just keep it on the wide if you're going to be in your phone. It's kind of fun. It seems really fucking fun. It's, it's pretty fun, yeah. It's like a really strong wine margs. It's not like... You're not I'll just drink beer there. I don't give a fuck. I'm yeah. just going to get fucked up. It is very weird to be outside of a Payless just getting hammered, though. It's like... It's hey, what I it's used to... It's a Foot Locker. Whatever. And it's right next to the food court. It is next What's to the food weirder court. is being that drunk around that many, like, 16-year-olds, which That's I've done before at a Taylor Swift concert. Not fun. It's not a good time. It wasn't just then. Single Rob, you were the, you were the plug. Calm down. What <laughs> are you talking about? Dan's just besmirching yeah, your name right didn't now. Didn't get drunk around any 16-year-olds as um, Single Rob. But... I Go do to twin liquors. They're just hanging out, waiting for somebody to buy them booze. Right. Although yeah. one time, <laughs> you're like, well, you got to buy them to the house. Rob reverse, hey, Mr. Skates outside of liquor like, stores. Like, hey, you want me to hey, buy kid. you something? Hey, kid. Hey, I'm kid. pretty fucking cool. <laughs> <laughs> I have my own keys to my own car. I pay bills. You guys need American Spirits, too? Some six? Yeah, whatever, whatever you need. I'll get you whatever you need, man. Um, one Mike's time I, I did, uh, at, I was at the SEC championship game in 2014, and fucking shit-faced on Adderall, everything. And this kid... Uh, comes up to me, obviously like a child, he's like 14 at the time, and he's like, you're bacon, right, from TFM? And I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like going to get a beer. I've been drinking. I basically didn't wake up sober. It made been, your fucking day. Don't lie. Oh, I loved it, but he was like a 14. <laughs> I was like, I go to SLU, like, which is St. Louis University High School. And, so, and I was like, yeah, great to be a pretty, uh, pretty fucked up. I got to go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that... Yeah, that's happened to me before too. Not, not to that. Not. Oh, you're that guy from that. But just like you bump into someone that's yeah. significantly younger than you, and you are way too drunk to be way interacting with them. And it's like, yeah, no, I'm just seeing later. Um, I am curious though too. It was funny. The thing that weirded me out about the mall bar though was I had realized it's like it's been 15 years since I've been this drunk in a mall. Like the last time I'd been. Do you drunk not go to mall. Cheesecake Factory? No, not I do regularly. Not like. In the mall, like at the restaurant in the mall, like in the mall, right. like drunk, drinking, actively drinking. I'm sure you can take drinks to go into the mall. 
Yeah, that needs now, to be a thing. Now, now, every store should demand that. Yeah, it's not like it's. Uh, oh yeah, talk about business, right? It's not an open container if it's all within indoors. The ecosystem right? of the mall. The whole mall. The whole mall is its own contained thing, so it's not open oh. container. I also just imagine everyone that walks the mall in the morning, all the old people, are just getting fucked up. They should be. As they should be. Why yeah. wouldn't they? They're just vaping the entire time. They're just time. trading pills, <laughs> ripping fucking fingering each other in Huge the bathroom. Clouds, yeah. yeah. All types of weird stuff. I'm down. I I'm, get fucked up in that Barton's. I used to get fucked up in that Barton uh, Creek Mall Cheesecake Factory regularly. It got a little dangerous now. There there's was a, a smash of, and grab. There's a lot of carjackings. <laughs> yeah, it's not a great parking lot. Not a great parking lot. No. Yeah, the first thing my mom said when we went to that mall one time was, why does it have so many signs that say, stop, hide? Take yeah. like like your possessions. Run, hide, fight. Yeah, it's just the science. Run, hide, fight. Yeah. So this is actually a city where the term "get out of dodge" originated from. Hmm. Yeah. I'm surprised hmm. you two didn't know that. It must be a Midwestern thing. It must be. I, I didn't actually believe this. I said one of my sources claimed "get out of dodge" originated it, from it this is. wild west town uh, due to its violent nature. Yeah, I gotta get the hell out of dodge. I thought it meant like get out of a dodge and into a Ford, you pussy. That's what it means in my hometown. Or a ram. Or that, that's well, a, ram dodge. Is a dodge. Yeah. <laughs> that is a dodge. Yeah, that is a dodge. Literally a dodge. I'm, I'm a Ford boy, so. As am I. My dad's a Chevy guy, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we don't talk. I wouldn't. No. I'm a, a Scion man myself. Uh, you're a big fan of Nissan trucks, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Smaller the better. Yeah. Yeah. I want to be able to haul one pig. In the truck of the bed. That's it. If that. The cemetery right outside of town was called Boot Hill as a play on the amount of men who were buried after being gunned down in the streets with their boots still on. It was essentially the what about Chicago of its time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because a lot of the narrative was built around the murder peak from July 1872 to July 1873 when it documented 18 men died of gunshot So wounds. one month made this reputation. Year. One year. Oh, one year. year. I'm yeah. sorry. Okay. Uh, 1872 to 1873, July to July. But only 18 people were murdered? 18 men died of gunshot wounds. Nine others wounded, uh, and the town had no law enforcement of any kind. It was just a place where outlaws went to kind of like gamble, drink. Yeah. And yeah, like the Isn't occasional this where uh, Bill Hickok made his name? Uh, there are some notable names that I will get to. Okay. I, I think Bill Hickok was one. I don't Hickok's believe Bill one. Hickok was one, okay. or at least he's not in my notes. He might have been another crazy town, but yeah. go on. Yes. After visiting Dodge, a Hay City Sentinel editor wrote, Dodge is the Deadwood of Kansas. Her incorporate limits are the... Uh, so it's not even the fucking... It, Deadwood... Deadwood is the Deadwood. Yeah. yeah. So it's not well, even let its me own finish thing. The, let me finish all right, the quote. All right, but I'm already on corporate limits are the rendezvous of the unemployed scallywags in seven states. Her principal business is polygamy without the sanction of religion. Her code of morals is the honor of thieves and decency she knows not. Kansas has but no has but one Dodge City with a broad expanse of territory sufficient Sufficiently vast for an empire, we have only room for one Dodge City. Dodge, a synonym for all that is wild, reckless, and violent. Hell on the plains. So people fucked. People fucked, people fought. Also, it's not polygamy if you're not married. Yeah. So what do, you, what do they even call it? It's just people fucking. It could be polygamy if you're not married. This guy was kind of... Date a, multiple people. I guess. This guy was kind of fancy with the way he worded it, too. He called people scallywags no, and said rendezvous. People, people used to have vocabularies. Oh, really? Now we're just like, yeah, man, those fucking people, they're fucking... Ah, shit, dude. They fuck so much, and they, like... Ah, they just, like... Ah, they fuck a lot of people, and they, like, kill each other. Well, that answers our question from last episode, where we asked, what do people call others that they... What would they insult them with that wasn't Nazi or Kami? It was scallywag. Right. It was. Like, this was back when people didn't have a go-to. No. No Nazi. No commie. Well, carpetbagger maybe. Carpetbagger certainly. Yeah. What's the other one? The other, the reverse of a carpetbagger. What? You're from the south. South up to the north. I don't remember. No. Off the top of my head. Okay. Slave owner. <laughs> <laughs> probably that. Yeah, probably that too. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Racist. <laughs> Usually. Whatever. Well, they were all racist. Yeah, everyone was racist. They were like, yeah, you shouldn't own them, but otherwise, fuck them. I mean, 
Wasn't great. The place finally brought in a law officer in 1875 with Marshal Larry Deeger. And a year later, the mayor brought in Wyatt Earp to clean up the streets by dropping the bag of a salary 10 times greater than the average lawman. So they're just like, we need somebody of note. Please come save this. Who town. everyone's scared of. To, uh, to shoot them, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Earp also brought in Charlie Bassett, Ed and Bat Masterson as his deputies. Yeah. I mean, when you're a, a sheriff back then, you're essentially just muscle. Yeah. That's all you are. Pretty much. Especially in towns like this where there's no fucking law. I mean, this, by the way, that's weird. So Kansas, I don't think is a state yet, but it's still a territory, right? When did Kansas become a state? Hey, when? Siri, when did Kansas become a state? <laughs> you don't trust his Google? What's Here's your... an answer from Wikipedia. Kansas became the 34th state admitted to the Union on the 29th of January, 1861. All right, so, it been a, so it's been a state at this it's point. It's a state, yeah. So you, that's actually crazy. You use the British Siri? Yeah. <laughs> it's hotter. <laughs> it's sexier. <laughs> okay. It is. I mean, I guess. It sounds, it makes me sound fancier. I was going to say Girl British like Siri, too. Not the, it, not the weird butler. I just want to eventually have a... What's that Joaquin Phoenix movie? Her. Oh, I want to yes. have a her situation. Oh, yeah. I want to fuck my watch. <laughs> well, You want it to be British? Yeah. yeah have you I seen these uh, sex spots that are coming out? Sick. Do you hear about this? Uh, you hear about this? You hear about this? You hear about this? They talk. Cool. Is it cool? It seems like a bad move. Yeah, I don't think you want your sex box. No, I want the exact situation I want is the uh, robot prostitutes from AI. What about just the robot prostitutes from Westworld? That's, that's the same thing, basically. Yeah. Oh. Wasn't Jude Law a robot prostitute in AI? Yeah, I want to fuck Jude Law. But the robot. Which is 2001 Jude Law. Yeah. Robot, me jumping through a wormhole, then him jumping through my hole. Back and forth. Whatever. Whatever. Hole. Just hole. Just holes. Just me and holes. Shall buff? Yeah. Yeah. Essentially. And then we both eat onions afterwards. <laughs> Sing that dumb song. Yeah. In so my the, hole. This new team of sheriffs set up a deadline dividing the town into north and south sides, using the railroad tracks as a boundary. On the south side, anything goes. Anything was allowed including gunfights and brothels. In fact, the term red light district allegedly begun in Dodge City as train employees used their red train lights to see their way to the brothels when they came to town. That's per I do actually agree with, like, just put it in an area. Yeah, just it always put it works. all in an area. Just look at Skid Row. Yeah. Yeah. It'll stay there. It kind of does. Why not? Yeah. It's like the forest next to Dan's house. <laughs> Just keep them in there. Yeah. Do you think they know about? Do you think the police know about that? They do. Yes. I've seen them outside of it many times. Oh really? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So they it's show just like, up regularly. So they're just like, yep, they're here. There's like, nothing they can do about it. Anyone OD? No. We good? It's also Sunset Valley Police, so it's not even real. It's police. not even real police. They're contracted out. But you have to like no, call I've the seen sheriff. Texas Highway Patrol. Uh. Like you have to contact the sheriff. Oh in no. Sunset Valley. That's why I've seen Travis County sheriffs. Is what I've seen there. Yeah. At your at your homeless red light district in the forest should venture down there sometime uh one of the guys that i go to the dog park with actually got his truck stolen by them stolen <laughs> stolen oh wait didn't your truck get fucking jammed up again smashed and stuff yeah i got hit again where do you park <laughs> <laughs> yeah i just park in a normal spot listen to rob victim blaming immediately I, at this point, at some point, my truck's asking for the it. the common denominator is your truck at some point yeah <laughs> like yeah. I don't know what else could possibly or happen. Or the complex. And, you know. It's just me. Yeah. <laughs> just hating on you, trying to bring you down a couple pegs. Yeah, I actually just park it in the middle of the, uh, the exit. Yeah. <laughs> and you have to bump it to get out. <laughs> you have a sticker on there that says, like, fuck homeless people. And they just keep showing up and breaking into it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then I leave a 20 on the windshield. <laughs> yeah. That'll help. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just like, please do not smash my truck windows. I, I, people in Oakland do that, right? Yeah, they put a, they just put like ten dollars on the window, and they're like, "There's nothing in here. Please don't." Cars open. Yeah, don't smash. Yeah, or they put, yeah, they put a note on it. Cars open. Nothing's in here. Don't smash. I might have to start doing that. 
Uh, on the north side, guns could not be worn or carried at any time. That uh, sounds like an infringement on everyone's rights. Yes. I'm against it. So, and nor- I will shoot Wyatt Earp in the face <laughs> if he ever makes me do it. Anyone wearing or carrying a gun was immediately arrested and put in jail. The jail was quickly filled up with those who refused to leave their guns at the town's edge. Is it refused to or forgot? Because uh, sometimes you might just walk across the line or you're shit-faced and you don't know and, you know. How could they legally do this? Have a no-gun part of town? There weren't laws. There's no, there's no, one no was, laws. No one was arguing there's for no their constitutional laws. right? There's no laws. So everything is a law and nothing is a law. You okay. just throw people in a room if you feel like throwing people in a room. Yeah, Earp's essentially a contracted, like, mercenary yeah yeah no i mean he's definitely trying to ground up like law and order here <laughs> like I guess he's trying I to get this. it off the ground floor it's not that there's no laws it's that law is whatever you want it to be like there are written laws but enforcing the laws is whatever you want it to be two entirely separate things yeah yeah i mean who essentially who at this time was doing like kind of the national law was it just like the pinkertons and like groups like that i uh, i mean i don't know who was lobbying obviously like congress was still making laws and shit and but the state, people enforcing state, them were like state legislators were making you know, private I, I groups know. we yeah. should really do a pinkerton episode we should they're yeah, in everything they are do you know what the pinkertons are yeah i do okay did you play red dead i didn't i haven't played they're, it they're in it uh so erp acted more as a consultant for the town, as he was constantly bouncing around from gold excursion he had going on with his brother in the Black Hills of South Dakota. So he was up in Deadwood. He was, yeah. Yeah. Uh, to bounty hunting outlaws like train robber Dave Radaba, where he met and befriended Doc Holliday during the chase. Fun. Yeah. Eventually, Mayor James H. Dog Kelly wired Earp enough money for him to stay in town as marshal. So I'll be, Please, people keep murdering each other. We have a terrible reputation. I say just make money on their reputation, right? Oh, everyone comes here to fuck and drink. Oh, they kind of did. So once it went national, okay. So like they I set said, up, like you could buy tickets. Like I said, how it became the narrative of like it was that times. What about Chicago? Yeah. It, national news was yeah, like you said, only eighteen people got murdered that year. And they kind of rode the momentum of that. Yeah. And like, it's this dangerous, crazy town. I'm sure town. New York was doing that a month. Yeah. But it's the Wild West, I guess, per capita. Uh, yeah, the rate stats aren't great, for sure. But 18 over the course of a year in what's supposed to be, like, gunfight city, <laughs> it's a little disappointing. Yeah. We're talking 27. Like, two people a month get hit by a bullet. Right, it was a national narrative that built this town. Really. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like one percent of your population died over the course of a year, though, from guns, from, from guns, guns. Yeah. and another half percent. No, were... that, but that's that. Even that's inaccurate because you're not taking into account the population isn't even isn't even the way to do it because you're not taking into account people that are just coming in and out of the town, laying low. Mm, yeah. Like no, guess, visitors, travelers, stuff like that. Yeah, I'm sure they're not taking it's, a normal census where it's like... Because right, right on the area. Santa Fe it's one, Trail. Right. Yeah. It's one thing to not do that for New York because there's so many people there, what, or even Chicago now, because there's so many people there that you don't really need to take into account visitors or whatever. But for a town of like 1,200, you might... Yeah, yeah I would maybe take into account all the fucking people going through it if you're going to like count... Yeah, yeah. Shit. If it's 18, it's 18 residents or is it 18 outlaws that right. would just happen to be here. I get that. Okay. I see your point. Earp pressured the courts for more severe sentencing, barred certain men from the town, and organized a citizens' committee of reformers to help watchdog the streets. So a nerd council? <laughs> yeah, like a, was this, a neighborhood watch? Yeah, basically. <laughs> Do you have one? An HOA. I have an HOA. You're not part of the neighborhood watch? If we have a neighborhood watch, I, I, I don't know about it. Now, there is a man who sits in a plastic chair with his uh, AR-15 every night. Are you serious? And we don't. Yeah, it makes me feel safe. We don't bother him. Yeah, it's right. Yeah. Off, I mean, you're South Austin too. Yeah, we like, don't bother him. He knows how to handle that gun. Yeah, mm. it's not one of these new city folk. No, he knows what he's doing. Yeah, yeah. I'd be okay with that with the right guy. Honestly, yeah. If it was like a former marine or something, I'd be yeah, like, yeah, be yeah like, all right, sure, why not? You'll probably scare off anyone driving through. Yep. It's like, who's that? It's Ned. Yeah, or he'll just shoot a coyote, which is I'm also fine it's with. Fine with it, honestly. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, there's not a whole lot of uh, neighborhood shootings, right? No, there's never neighborhood no one, shootings. No one's ever going on a rampage no. in a neighborhood. Never. No. Ever. Because of the neighborhood watch guy. 
guy in the in the chair with his rifle. It's essential. Yeah, he's fucking around. Right. Would I am surprised this never happened as people just close off a bridge? Like you just time it perfectly, you get two U Haul trucks and you're just like and then just go bananas on a bridge. Wow. You thought about that, huh? Why the U Haul? Is it block. full of is it full of dynamite or no 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 it just blocks the whole block thing. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I thought you were blowing the bridge. No 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 no. But why not? <laughs> Blow it. <laughs> yeah. Either way. Yeah. Actually that'd be more fucked up. That made me so afraid to be on a bridge. And then you'd like just dive off backwards from the bridge laughing, you hit the button, yeah. And it blows, and you like paraglide away. You should you, paraglide for sure, yeah. Yeah. You, you squirrel suit. Squirrel suit, yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> On April 9th, 1878, his boy Ed Masterson was killed in a gunfight. Earp reached out to Doc Holliday for his services to help out, so he moved to town with his associate and his on-again, off-again girlfriend, Big Nose Kate Elder. Uh, It's not a great name for your girlfriend. (laughs) I'm guessing that wasn't her self-proclaimed nickname. Really uh, no effort with these nicknames, but uh, also just mean, uh, because I saw photos of her. Not that outrageous of a nose. Like, it's a pretty normal nose. Oh, it's rude. Sure, why not? So, I'm sorry, what, when is this happening? 1870 what? 1878. Okay, so this is three years before the shootout of the OK Corral. Starring Wyatt Earp and Doc Holliday. There was, a, there was a shootout at the Golden Corral? OK Corral. Oh, <laughs> yeah, there's some. Have you seen the brawl fight from the the recent Golden Crowd brawl yeah, fight yeah, yeah. over the what? stakes? What? I didn't see that. Yeah, you oh. did. We uh, we did it on like four shows here. Okay, well, it's amazing. Yeah, we did it on like it. RPR Whatever. and shit. Yeah, I know. Look, popcorn shrimp's pretty good. It was over steak. Well, yeah, I think they ran out of the ribeye, right? They did. Yeah, yeah. that's what happens. <laughs> you don't run out. Yeah, that's the one rule of Golden Crowd. Don't run out. Don't run out. Yeah, do not. I didn't come here for the pork chops. Get me here for the goddamn bottomless ribeye. How did they survive, like, COVID? Bad ingredients, bro. Uh, old people. Yeah. You know what I drove by today? No, on... but they were closed for the longest time. They you know what I drove by today on the way to work? They get bailed out. Sure, why not? Did we bail out Golden Corral? Everyone yeah. got that, what, was it PP, what, IPP? Payment what? protection loans? Yeah, yeah, PPP, whatever the yeah. fuck it's called. Everyone got that. I drove by a Luby's today. There's still a Luby's open. In on Slaughter Lane, and literally there were two cars in the parking lot, but I knew it was slammed because there was one old person metro bus at the fucking door, <laughs> parked at the door. So there were at least 15 people in there going bananas. <laughs> and they don't know how to serve that fast at a Luby's. No. No. You, I'm pretty sure you self serve at a Luby's, don't you? You do. It's yeah. a cafeteria style, but they yeah. still have to fill the trays and shit. Oh, right? yeah. They don't have the speed for that. You can't no. make pudding that fast. <laughs> no. And you get behind all those olds. Yeah. Just very slow. Uh, The rest of spring and summer of 1878, things seemed to settle down once Doc Holliday got there. Uh, The lawmen were seemingly getting Dodge in order. But on October 4th, things heated back up with the murder of stage performer, uh, stage performer, Dora Han. Whoa, someone shot uh, an actress? Yes. A singer? A singer. It's fucked up. That is fucked up. Why'd they kill her? Well, that is what this episode's kind of about. Okay. Yeah. I want to know because this is wrong. Everything else was a little bit of setup just to kind of give you a little background on the town. But this is, this episode is the murder of Dora Hand. Okay. I mean, by all means, kill whatever, you know, vagrants are going from town to town, barely having a job. Yeah. Don't kill the talent. Yeah. Don't kill the talent. Yeah. And I say that as talent. Don't kill the talent. Hand was a 34-year-old actress. Well, she's pretty singer. old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe past her prime. Yeah. Yeah, at this point. Uh, who drifted to Dodge from the east. Her background is a yeah, mystery. she's a drifter, too. <laughs> Wait, an this old, is just an old lady singing on a sidewalk? This is what is this? an old drifter? Yeah, all right. Well, <laughs> episode over. Performer is pretty loose here, no, I feel. No, no. Hear me out. <laughs> okay. Her background is a mystery. Legend has it she came from a good side or... A good family in Boston, had studied music in Europe, and had once been a grand opera singer under contract with a major uh, organization in New York. Yeah, great. Old has-been drifter. (laughs) Why am I sad? Like Doc Holliday, she was supposedly uh, battling tuberculosis. (laughs) 
right, so <laughs> probably hurts the singing career. Old has been drifter invalid <laughs> with a cough. Like, how do you sing with TB? Right. What, but what she kind came of, to the West. Never go to law school <laughs> for the healthier climate. So uh, the the air of Kansas helped her tuberculosis so she could sing. Sure, sure. Yeah, I mean, I guess not having coal pumping out of every fucking chimney around you might help. Han came to Dodge City on the advice of friend Fanny Gerritsen, a seasoned performer who had made the rounds of the cow towns and mining camps. Gerritsen was also a friend of Mayor Dog Kelly, the flamboyant Dodge mayor and part owner of the Alhambre Saloon and Gambling House. Through that connection, Gerritsen and Han landed stage gigs for a lucrative $40 a week at the Lady Gay Dance Hall and Saloon. Pretty good, pretty good. $40 a week is actually pretty fucking solid, I yeah, feel that's like. That's really good. Yeah. Yeah. Dog Kelly eventually started parading Dora around town. Soon she was the featured soloist at the Lady Gay, earning an astronomical $75 a week. So she's crushing it. Seems like it. Yeah. Pretty good, I guess. All right, so she's rich again. I'm back on her side. Mm -hmm. uh, Kelly was almost certainly not the only man in her life. Yeah, she had sex with guys. <laughs> cool. At the Lady Gay Corral. Yeah. Hand and Garrison were referred to as seasoned honky-tonk troopers. And their morals may not have been any better than they should have been. That was a quote. All right, so she's a dirty whore <laughs> with tuberculosis. But this, uh, the source that I found insists they were not whores. Well, yeah, they weren't prostitutes. They were just flirtatious. They're, okay, so they're teases. They were teases. That's they led people killer. on. Yeah. <laughs> killer. Killer. Also, just I looked up the numbers. She'd be earning about six figures a year. Six figs? On that, on 75. In Dodge City? Yeah. Good Lord. She might have been the richest person there. Probably. It's like the problem we talked. Did we talk about this on, on air the other day? Maybe not. Whereas like when we had our dinner at Lonesome Dove at some point, I just get like annoyed, not really annoyed, but like slightly annoyed. It's like the waitress is making more per hour than I am. You're going to be shammy it, huh? Because it's so expensive. Yeah. Yeah. You should have, you shouldn't have tipped her. <laughs> it should pay her salary. Yeah. Yeah. She also had fame in this city, uh, as every man and woman in Dodge, good, bad, or indifferent, knew all sides of Dora Han's life. Uh, so she, came, she became pretty popular pretty quick in town. She's the most famous person in Dodge City. Mm -hmm. It's like if Lady Gaga just, like, I don't know, lived in Lake Tahoe and only, like, was just performing in Lake Tahoe constantly, right? Like a big town everyone knows, but it's not like super populated. That's probably a fair comparison, yeah. Yeah. So... Ever, but she lives there and goes out there and does everything there. Yeah. Sure. Now, a man by the name of Spike Kennedy, like many men Ooh. in town. No one good has ever been named Spike. Was smitten with the lovely Dora Han. Had never really talked to her, though, probably. Didn't really even know her. Seems like a guy who just, like, watched her on stage and really wanted to fuck her. So like, she'll be mine. Yeah, you, uh, you're calling this pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> You want to just guess the rest of this said? You could, yeah. yeah. Uh, Spike, so some guy just like looked at her and was like, I want to fuck that. I'm in love with her. That's kind of what love was back then, right? Sure. All the outlaws, they're just Is it like, really different now? No. No. No, it's not. Yeah. I mean, really, even if you like someone, you're thinking to yourself like, I want to have sex with her. I want to fuck her. You're not going to go to the weird situations that this guy probably went through. You're going to do it consensually, but... At the end of the day, you look at someone and you're like, I would like to be inside of them, or vice versa. Right. Yeah. But at the same time, like, there, I mean, now there's plenty of, I guess, like, famous people that have to deal with others they have, they've never talked to, they've never in interacted with. Yeah, oh, looking yeah. at them and being like, that, that one. Showing up to their, like, house or apartment with balloons and... <laughs> Milling them clumps of hair. Balloons feels like a win. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's like best case scenario yeah. for creepy obsession, right? Run there and stab with a balloon. <laughs> yeah, because don't, like, Justin Bieber and Taylor Swift, like, people just show up to their homes. Yeah, yeah all the time. That seems awful. They're like, please fuck, please fuck me. It's got to be so much more crushing for the girl, little girl. Well, obviously, for the, for the girls, girls got to suck. Because, like, obviously, the guy know, has to know ahead of time. Obviously, Taylor Swift's not into it. But even a girl. No, dude, these guys are get. I mean, just from the, the few of the, the 
famous people we know, or quote unquote famous, whatever, they have to deal with so much bullshit. And these, they deal with a lot of like terrible dudes that just don't catch any hints. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That are like, yeah, man, come on. Can we keep heck? Yeah. Let's go do stuff. And yeah. Or don't even talk to them at all and yep. just show up to their homes. Yep. Yeah. That's terrifying. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, it was kind of like that. Um, Spike fell hard for the singer and mistook her flirtatious manner for genuine affection. Hmm. He was also jealous of dog Kelly's... Not to editorialize, but that's her fault. Right. right, you've, right. you've been just so hard on this person. <laughs> yeah. She's a has-been, drifter, a bitch. I was, yeah. I was only interpreting the details I was given. <laughs> Sure. No, it's not her fault. Obviously, this guy's a fucking psycho. His name's Spike. Yeah, and yeah. all, and he just like was like, just looked at her and was like, she looked at me like she likes me. She, she made eye contact me. with me because I was sitting here in the stage in the front row. Right. Like he's in love with the stripper. Yeah. He's, Except he, not even that. He fell for the classic. Right. Trap. Yeah. He's in love with the Hooters waitress. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Hooters waitress that can sing. Yeah. They should have a Hooters where they actually sing. I agree. What is, what is there's Tilt to Kill. So it's essentially a strip club, but they sing instead of dance. Yeah. I'm down with that, actually. But they're not naked. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be a great well, place. Well, they'd be for, naked, too. That's fine. It'd be like a great spot in LA. I just, I just find always, talent. Yeah. I just always think about how, like, I would prefer, uh, instead of being grinded on at a strip club, like, they stay on the stage and do show tunes. Still titties. You would. But it's Co- like, That's the most Rob fantasy sentence yeah. I've ever heard in my well, life. It's classier. It's yeah. definitely classier. I'm not arguing with but that. But she just walks out and she's like, I feel pretty. Oh, so pretty. <laughs> I feel pretty and witty and gay. And then and just thrills oh her bra at you. Yeah. Don't cry for me. Argentina would bring the house down. Oh, my God. I know. So he was jealous of Dog Kelly's relationship with the singer and apparently wanted to steal her away from the mayor. As he totally could have, I'm <laughs> sure. <laughs> Now, Kennedy nursed a bitter hatred for Dodge City law officers, but he lacked the backbone to take up a personal fight with any of them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Sounds accurate. This is all I'm out. sorry, are we, are we, is this an episode about a mass shooting? I'm sorry, uh, chick won't, a chick won't uh, uh, like return his love. He is a huge pussy. I feel like we're just, mass shooting is coming. You're on the right trail. <laughs> <laughs> Rob Fox prediction machine continues to churn out hits. Yeah. Uh, instead, he expressed his grievances to Mayor Kelly uh, one <laughs> night. What, he's having sex with someone that he should be having sex with? Yes. According to him? According to him, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm smarter s- than you. I know it. <laughs> so they kind of went back and forth, and Kennedy flew into a rage and leaped at the mayor. Kelly gave the younger man a thorough beating and dumped him in the street. So the mayor beat his ass. And then dumped him in the mud. Yes. That's an origin story for a mass shooter. <laughs> it sure is. Yeah. Kennedy was furious. Uh, and mouthing, not himself, I guess. Yeah. Mouthing dark threats against the life of the mayor. He mounted up and rode out of town. No one in Dodge expected to see him again. I feel like if he's going to threaten oh you, God, you probably this is exactly a mass shooter. It's like, yeah, I don't know. He's weird. Look, he's not going to do anything. This little bitch. He's running away. Yeah. yeah. He's not coming back. Now, yeah. Spike longed for revenge. He couldn't carry a gun in Dodge City, so according to some accounts, he began to lay a trap. He watched Kelly closely and noted his nightly routine. So from where? So he stalked him. He was so he, did him. he come back to Dodge? He was kind of seeing him from out of town, like uh, from a distance. What, did he have a telescope? He's fucking watching him. He's a rich guy. He might have had those. So, so Spike Kennedy was. His dad, his dad uh, owned, owned a bunch of like ranch ha- land in Texas. So oh he was God, just kind of like a trust a fund child. This yeah. is a mass shooter. Yeah. yeah. Like, God damn. Probably this is that survey. fucking little piece of shit that shot up the sorority house. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That God. was like, you did. You, you see Santa Barbara guy? Yeah. Yeah. You yeah, babe. rejected me for no reason. <laughs> I'm rich. Like, yeah. Seriously, it is that guy because he that didn't is... understand how, because he was rich, he wasn't getting right. laid. <laughs> that video still creeps me out. It is creepy. Uh, I'm, so, I'm sad that guy died. So he, he stalked should be alive him. to be tortured a lot. Yeah. Stalked him and just came up with a pretty basic plan of shooting through the flimsy wall of the bedroom at the front of the mayor's two-room shack. Okay. Um, yeah, I can't imagine a lot of great architecture in Dodge City, Kansas, 
or Kansas. No. Kelly Shack stood behind the Great Western Hotel and was the same cabin townspeople had often seen Dora entering and leaving, obviously because they were boning. As the mayor spent many late nights at his uh, casino, he was in the habit of sleeping in the shack. Uh, so is this like an Al Swearingen type? I'm just, my whole reference is Deadwood. Yeah, it's, yeah, I, I don't know Deadwood. I've uh, never seen Deadwood. Uh, he runs the inn and, and bar and casino. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I know it's one of your favorite shows. It's, you it's should watch it. A I, top, I want to. It's a top five all-time show. I've only seen the movie. What? No, I'm kidding. Okay. <laughs> wow. Oh, Deadwood's so good. Is the movie any good, though? I, haven't, I actually haven't watched that because I was kind of skeptical of it. The reason they made it is because the creator has dementia, and he wanted to make one more thing before his brain kind of was flies totally off. Fucked. It, yeah. yeah. Is that true? Yeah. Oh, wow. I did not know that. It's easily the best dialogue I've ever heard in any show. Uh, so from his stalking, Kennedy knew that Kelly slept in the front room of the two-bedroom shack. What Kennedy didn't know was that early October, when he returned to Dodge to kill the mayor, um, Mayor Kelly was suffering from some kind of intestinal illness. And diarrhea. <laughs> diarrhea. He had diarrhea. Dysentery. Yeah, yeah. diarrhea. He had diarrhea. Just say diarrhea. It's fine. He had diarrhea. But he needed an operation. A, a diarrhea operation. Yeah. Anti, well, what, an what, do anti entail, what do you think that entails? I, I don't know. Putting some cotton up your asshole. <laughs> eating cheese. Yeah, Probably eating cheese. Else, yeah. Eating cheese helps. Cheese eating plugs. Cheese. Yeah. Plugs you up. Yeah. yeah. It's the magical animal byproduct that saved Mesopotamia. Mm-hmm. Uh, but as Kelly was on bad terms with the town doctor, he had gone to Fort Dodge to seek the advice of an army surgeon. Prior to leaving town, he invited Dora Han and Fanny Gerritsen to stay at a shack. Fanny occupied the front room, Dora the back. Oh, no. This doesn't sound too good for Fanny. <laughs> According to the articles in the October 5th Dodge City Times and October 8th Ford County Globe, at about 4 in the morning of October 4th, a lone horseman rode up to Kelly's shack behind the Great Western. This midnight assassin squeezed off two 44 caliber pistol rounds at the shack and then galloped off. The first shot reported the October 8th Globe after passing through the front door, struck the floor, passed through the carpet, and a facing of the portion of the lodge in the next room. The second shot also passed through the door, but it was apparently more elevated, striking the first bed passing over Miss Garrison, who occupied the bed. Through the two quilts, through the plastered uh, partition, and after passing through the bed clothing and second bed, struck Fanny Keenan in the right side under the arm, killing her instantly. That's fucking nuts. The How does that about. happen? Yeah, that's... By the way... Oh, Fanny Keenan, by the way. I, I, that's, I don't know why. That's her actual real name was... Uh, the, the singer's real name. Oh, okay. Dora is Fanny? Dor Dora is Fanny, yeah. Well, that doesn't... Well, man, there's, that's two, there's two fannies. That's wild to me, by the way, because... So, uh, you remember one of the more famous scenes in Saving Private Ryan, the early scene, where those guys are, like, underwater and they get shot? Oh, yeah, yeah. That can't happen. Yeah, you were talking about that the other day, actually. Bullets don't do anything once they, they hit the water. They hit water, they pretty much... They're done. Hmm. Like, you can't get a bullet through six water balloons, apparently, something like that. Like, it, a bullet hits <laughs> water. A bullet does not just go through water like that. Can we myth bust that? That sounds wrong. No, I've, I've, I saw a video of myth bust, or the, a myth buster video, essentially, where it So, you that. should, if you're running into any situation, you should... The U.S. military has experimented with water bulletproof vest type of situation. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, if I tied, like, 100 water balloons around me, I have a better shot? No, because it's just one. No, I'm saying like, but I did yeah, like a yeah, layer. Yeah, yeah, just wear a big yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. like a, but no, like you couldn't, if they were like in, in St. Private Ryan especially, they were clearly like fucking, you know, six feet underwater or something mm -hmm. like that. Now, like, when you're falling into a body of water, you just got to break it, right? You just got to throw your shoe down before you hit the water. Yeah. And it'll just break it like concrete. Yes. That works every time, It's no? just, psh, yeah, down there. So why you point your toes. it's weird to me that this bullet did that through, I mean, I guess it's mostly air, but it did still have to go through several solid objects to get to her armpit or whatever. Yeah, that it's, was also a handful with the way they wrote that. Yeah, no, I, that was a mouthful. That was a lot to like process, but it is, it's insane that one, this guy 
had this just fucking shot plan, like terrible plan, and it worked. He just went, boop, boop. He just shot. He couldn't see anything. Yeah, it was a terrible guess shot. I'm surprised that the second one hit anything, but it killed the woman he loved. I don't think he intended to kill anybody. No, I think he he wanted to kill the mayor. He wanted to kill the mayor. I don't think he intended to kill anybody. I think he intended to scare the scare people. You, there is no one. There is no serious intention to kill if you just fire off two random shots into a door or a wall or whatever. I'm sorry, Rob. Anytime you fire a gun, you're intending to kill. It's true. Yeah. Now, no one actually saw Kennedy fire the shots, but when Assistant Marshal Wyatt Earp and Policeman Jim Masterson responded to the gunshots, they were told Spike had committed the cowardly murder. The outraged citizens of Dodge demanded Kennedy be brought to justice. At 2 p.m. on October 4th, a posse set out after the suspect, the suspected murder. You never want a posse after you. That is the no. one thing you don't want after you. No. Nobody wants to get some posse. No. no. So it was Bat Masterson, uh, Charlie Bassett, Wyatt Earp, and soon-to-be oh. lawman Bill Tillman. So it's not just a posse. It's a extremely deadly posse. Like a posse that's dope at killing. Yeah. It's not a bunch of morons with pitchforks. It's a suicide squad. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, So they rode out. Uh, The now famous posse members guessed Kennedy would head for the safety of his rich father's ranch in Texas. Smart. By riding through a fierce rainstorm, they managed to jump the trail ahead of him uh, near Mead City, 35 miles southwest of Dodge. On the afternoon of October 5th, Kennedy caught sight of the waiting lawman and tried to gallop away. But Masterson and Earp quickly put a stop to that. Bat put in a 50 caliber rifle round in Kennedy's left shoulder and Wyatt shooting Kennedy's horse out from under him. Oh, the horse didn't need to get it. Oh, that's a bummer. That's yeah. a bummer. Oof. When the posse pulled up to the injured outlaw, Spike immediately asked after the condition of, uh, or he asked about uh, Dog Kelly. Did I kill him? Wyatt gave Spike the bad news that the bullet intended for the mayor had instead killed Dora Han. It's a very cowboy movie moment. Mm. Did, I, did I at least kill him? Did I at least kill the man I wanted to kill? Also, what, what are you, where are you going? I guess you're going to hide out for a while and then show up after Dora gets over him. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like you're coming back after this is a kidnapper. One, this is one step at a time planning. <sighs> Jesus Christ. He's like, oh, he sleeps in that room in that shack? Yeah. All right. I'm a shoot in the door. He then I'll see like what the happens. Smartest <laughs> bulb in the shed, you know? No, no. Trust fund kid. Trust fund kid. Trust fund kid. Yeah. Trust the far end for sure. Now, uh, the posse brought the wounded Kennedy back to Dodge on October 6th and kept him in jail as much to protect him from angry citizens as to hold him for a murder trial. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Of which he was definitely guilty. Yeah. Predictably, his cattle baron father. Mifflin Kennedy, that's a great name. That is a good name. Rushed I'm, to Dodge City from Texas. Can I actually, I'll just say this right now, because I'm weird like this. I hope his rich dad gets him off. Just for the story? Yeah, just for the story. Man, do you just want to like lead this episode? <laughs> <laughs> because he comes to town with $25,000 cash. <laughs> that's, how you, that's how you do it. Yeah. Tale as old as time. <laughs> And Kennedy was surprisingly acquitted in court due to lack of evidence. Well, you know. Did anyone see? I mean, I was honestly kind of First wondering. First there that. is no evidence. I was going to say, yeah, how do they prove that? There's no b- way to test yeah. the ballistics on that. Like, they don't have There's proof no he did it. no way to do anything. Yeah. You need to catch people in the act back then. Yeah. Yeah, you could move a town over and really. Not even that. Whatever whatever you want to. No, to prosecute, uh, like, the, our laws, like, have changed, but the premise of being guilty is not, like, they need to have you. They need to have you. They don't. Yeah. They don't know he did that. That's the thing, though. He got caught out in the prairie. If he just made it to the town over. Oh, yeah. Brand he, new he, life. Yeah, done. He's a new, he's a new man. Yeah, he's like, I'm Carl. <laughs> Sick? Carl's, yeah, I'm Carl Carlson. Hey, and man. nothing matters. Hey, Carl Carlson, your money spends here. Yeah. All right, that's it. I'm new. Never heard about Social security number? What's that? I was born in the sand. Yeah. Now, can, who I, now what can I fashion you, Carl? Yeah. Yeah. You want I'd like two a, X or three X, I'd like a candle. <laughs> Make me a candle. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Why not? We got a bed upstairs. Yeah. Nickel night. And all the prostitutes you want to murder. 
Yeah, I mean, he just had to make it to the next town. He didn't do it. Uh, but, you know, the elder Kennedy brought with him the satchel full of 25K, and he was let off. In the meantime, Han's funeral. Who, who, who'd that money go to? They didn't really say. It just Sounds like the mayor. Yeah, so he just <laughs> threw money at someone. <laughs> someone unidentified. The courts. Yeah. Whoever the judge not? is, I don't know. Maybe I can't imagine that went to paving roads. <laughs> no. No. No, it didn't go to a school. That casino has $25,000 yeah. more dollars in reserve. <laughs> That's yeah, all that happened. You no, know, the mayor really needed to get over Dora, so you know what would That's help? That's true. $25,000. Yeah. Just wiping his tears with hundies. And the best part is, by the way, that Wyatt Earp was even like, well, 25K, 25K, you know. You know. Like, at no point was Wyatt Earp like, God damn it, that's the man. Like, we, he's, he was wrong. He, we, like, he's a murderer. Like, the moral thing to it's do. It's about integrity. Yeah, there's no, the, none of that. None of that. I feel like they caught him in the first place just to get the money from his dad. Because they're like, we can't prove shit on this guy. Fucking probably. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, hey, you I'm know sure his Wyatt dad is? took a cut of that. Yeah. His dad was like the cattle Vanderbilt. Yeah. <laughs> Big cow guy. Big cow guy. Uh, so Han's funeral drew one of the biggest turnouts in Dodge City. Uh, one old Cal Han who witnessed it was quoted saying, every store, saloon, and gambling house in Dodge closed during the funeral, and 400 men with their sombreros on the saddle. Saddled horses rode behind the spring wagon that carried Dora Han up to Boot Hill. Uh, so that's how she was laid to rest. And then Spike eventually lost most of his left arm due to infection from the bullet wound. Well, at least he got something. Yeah, at least he got something. Yeah. Uh, he returned to Texas and died six years later at the age of 29. <laughs> Yikes. Of a uh, fever. <laughs> probably, yeah, probably from that bullshit. <laughs> it sucks. Well, he, he died yeah. of a fever? He died like he lived, sucking like yeah. a bitch. Yeah, yeah it's, it's insane to me, too. You say that he died at, what do you say, 29 years old? 29. So all this happened when he was like 22, 23? Six years before. Yeah. yeah. So 23. What a bitch. 23, sucks. and he was smitten with like a 35-year-old woman? Yeah, just in love with It was this. the first woman he probably saw. Yeah, for real. Yeah, that's probably true. Yeah. yeah. He's a trust fund kid, though. You would think he would do better. I don't know, man. All right, uh, I think this is pretty easy. Who's the Hitler of the story? I mean, God, what a grit. The era? <laughs> <laughs> Time. It's just so grim. Kansas. Like everything. I, I just the, honestly, part of the story just makes me think like that people don't understand how just grim life was. I don't know. Prior to World War One, it kind of sounds it. fun, though. No. What sounds fun about that? Like that's as far back as I would go in a time machine. It's like nineteen hundred, the Wild West, eighteen eighty, like eighteen, yeah, eighteen after the Civil War. Okay, yeah, eighteen seventies. That's if you watch Deadwood, they're pretty filthy. They're pretty filthy, dirty in that. I'm Deadwood, fine with that though. There's like plenty of prostitutes. Um, <laughs> filthy, dirty prostitutes. You get, to, you get to gamble. Do you know what a merkin is? You could. You would know what a merkin was. You could gamble, and <laughs> there are other times you can gamble. Go to like you 1920. Can, go to the Roaring Twenties. You, you can want gamble push. and have a prostitute right now. Yeah, well, I can live in both eras if I'm in the 1870s. I can live to 1920. Maybe. I guess Maybe. not in your youth. It it would smell so bad. Wasn't that the whole appeal of Westworld? Was just living out that fantasy? Yeah, in a perfectly sterile environment. Yeah, the really. robots weren't stinky. Yeah, um, yeah, but they were flashlights. They were flashlights, but they weren't stinky flashlights. Who cleans those? They spray them down after who every you, who story. Who do you think the fucking Felix, the fucking the ginger tech. with the beard? Yeah, yeah, but then they sprays fuck. it down with a fucking Clorox hose, and then sends it back out. <laughs> They dip it in milk, yeah. send it on its way. That's right, the milk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking creamy goodness. That milk never got dirty once. Should have been dirty. Uh, what did you guys learn today? Well, yeah, I didn't say my Hitler. Oh, yeah, Hitler is time. Hitler time. was the time, the era. Um, Tecumseh. That's all you learned? That's what I learned. Oh, actually, yeah. yeah. No, the Hitler uh, that caused the city was Sherman. Sherman. Yeah. Sure, that's what Hunting I was the buffalo. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah. If it weren't so many, that, the, the only people doing genocide, yeah. Buffalo genocide, him. To be fair, the Native Americans, they made the animals extinct kind of on accident. We did it on purpose. I think it's intent. The crime is the, is in the intent, right? It's the intent, yeah. Uh, my Hitler, I guess I'll go with the guy who murdered someone. 
Go with that guy. Mm-hmm. Actually, no, 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 no. Fuck that. You know who my Hitler is? Sneak, the sneaky Hitler? It's Wyatt Earp. That man <laughs> was not a lawman. <laughs> there was no law there. He was a gunslinger with a badge. Yeah, he was yeah. a fucking mercenary. No, I go with, uh, I go with Sherman for the Buffalo. And having a dumb middle name. You know, it was Big Nose. <laughs> Kate Big Nose? <laughs> Kate Big Nose was my Hitler. That's, that's really ironic, don't you think? Hmm. How? <laughs> Jews have big noses. Oh. I knew that's where you're going, but yeah, I was waiting for you to say it. <laughs> Coward. Oh. What did I learn today? Yeah, what did you learn today? Uh, Tecumseh. Me too. Yeah, I learned that. That's a great yeah. lie. I, I, had a lot, I had a lot of shit reinforced, though. Um, one, I would never go back to where you were just talking about going in time, too. Like, that pre-tw- sounds like pre-20th century. Is a nightmare. Right, what's I'm the, going or, forward. That's what's, it. Well, I don't want that either. But you, if you could only go back. Forward's going to be oh, terrible. Oh, if I could only go back. Um, the future's going to suck. <sighs> Dude, I, see, I feel like so many people would be like, oh, the 80s. It's like, the 80s doesn't look like it did on TV. No, none of those no. eras did. If you want to go see what the 80s look like, Google 80s McDonald's. Yep. With the brown ashtrays and shit like that. That's what yeah. the 80s look like. Yeah. Imagine smoking in a pizza hut. Oh, they got stained glass lamps. Yeah, but it also reeks in there. Yeah. No, everyone is yeah, but everyone sick. smokes. Yeah. So it's kind of a baseline. Uh, I kind of miss that. It's kind of cool. It smelled so good. Bring Nothing like going into a red lobster and just catching whiffs of yeah. fucking palm smoke. oils. What are you talking about? I want to smoke. Now. Yeah, in places where you should smoke. Bars. Bowling alleys. I do, yeah. I do yes. agree that... We need to find a middle ground on smoking laws. Like, there should be certain bars where it's like, you can rip whatever you want in here. Not crack or something, but like cigs, cigars. Smoke uh, a joint. Joints, whatever. Yeah, you can Outside. Smoke, you can smoke in here. I don't think no, you should fuck smoke. that. If you, have a, if you have more than two pool tables or more than two bowling lanes in your, in your bar, you yeah. should be able to smoke in there. Pool tables, definitely. Like if you bowling have th- lanes, too. Yeah. Any bowling alley should be all smoking. You should know. Yeah, you should know what it's like. Yeah. And the all it, it should be $5 pitchers. Yeah, I would say anywhere with a dartboard. <laughs> I I miss smoking in bars. That's all I'm going to say. It's kind of nice. Smells good. Love love it. Yeah. Uh yeah, that's this week's episode. Make sure to check out our patreon.com/softcorehistory. Did an episode, uh, Jake, why don't you tell them about what we did this week? Yeah, we did an episode on a possible demon named Terrere. He's from Lyons, France. Uh, he could eat everything. And he ate live puppies. He ate live cats. He probably ate a 14-month-old baby. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. He Maybe. definitely makes the uh, Dan Book of Freaks. Yeah. He has my stamp of approval. Yeah. Uh, if you actually, want- I really felt good about that episode. So go ahead and uh, pay us that $5 a month. Uh, you get the, the premium content. You get an episode a week, an extra episode a week. And... Add free, next week, course. and next week, uh, I gotta ask. I still gotta ask Joel and Coop, but I think we're gonna try to return the game show for the round third three, round. Bitch. Round three, bitch. So we're we'll fucking ready for out. you. I'm in. It's currently tied. Uh, Joel's in. Well, actually, it, why don't you you know? Well, he join the pa- said it. <laughs> yeah, why don't you join the Patreon and actually uh, kind of see how it got to be tied at one one? But um, it's fun. Every all the content up there is. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're th- figuring things out, but I think we're starting to hit our stride. And, uh, yeah, obviously, we also have the Christmas lotto. So, get in. The Christmas raffle. <laughs> right. Please stop calling it a lottery. <laughs> For the love of God. It's All a right. Christmas raffle. It's a Christmas raffle. It's 50-50. So, um... If you join the Patreon, you get essentially a 50-50 ticket for each month that you're part of the Patreon to get uh, half of December's revenue. Yeah. Whatever that may be. Whatever so, you tell your friends, whatever. Blah, blah, blah. We will give the winner half of our December revenue. Yep. Whatever that may be. And then we're also going to start throwing discount codes on there uh, for anybody that's merch. a part of it. Yes. So you can get like 20% off merch. I believe we have an email list I can pull those names from. Yeah. 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 So um, join the Patreon, of course, patreon.com slash softcore history. Leave a review, please. And thank you. Um, those go a long way. They help, you know, get the show on the charts. That's the only way we really get on is... Manipulated in Apple's charts. So leave a review. Uh, actually, for this week, I will... If you leave a review and it's hilarious, um, I will pick one of you with the funniest review left, and I will give you a free T-shirt of your choice. So I'll send you that. Yeah. Yep. Good review. Good review, funny review. Leave a funny one. 
I will pick one and we'll send out free merch. Uh, follow us at Softcore History on Instagram. Um, free merch of their choice. Free merch of their choice, yeah. Right. So it could be a hat too if you want a hat. Um, Softcore History on Instagram. Got a bunch of memes, a bunch of original Boosh memes. And uh, yeah, for Rob Fox and Jake Goldman, I'm Dan Register, and you just got soft served.